What is going on guys? It's Rob from Heroes Avenue. Happy Thursday. You're probably used to seeing Darren on Thursdays, but he's still on his honeymoon. Again, congrats to Darren for getting married. Anyways, we have some DC news to talk about because Patty Jenkins, as I got off work, I noticed she's in some hot water over comments she has over streaming service movies. And then we also have The Flash to talk about because two big DC characters may be appearing in the already overstuffed movie. I don't want to say overstuffed. I guess I haven't seen the movie yet, so I don't know how overstuffed it is, but it does feel like that. So before we get started, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate all the constructive criticism that have been uh, commented on on previous videos, so I appreciate you guys. Thanks for liking the video. It really does help support our channel. Anyways, let's get on to today's topic today. The first topic is going to be Patty Jenkins. As I mentioned, I just got off of work and noticed that everyone is roasting her on Twitter over comments on streaming service movies. So let's check it out. It says, um, Wonder Woman director criticizes streaming services fake looking movies. And this is uh, on Screen Rant here. And um, it uh, goes over kind of Patty Jenkins' background a little bit and what led her to her most recent release in Wonder Woman 1984. But here we go. This is her comments from CinemaCon. Um, so as a part of this year's CinemaCon via LA Times, Jenkins participated in a panel to discuss the future of cinema, in particular the recent boom of streaming platforms supported by the global pandemic. In reflecting on original films produced by streaming platforms, Jenkins opined that the titles all didn't appear real and supported her opinion with a lack of discussion about them reaching her. See what she says below. It says, are you seeing it? All of the films streaming services are putting out? I'm sorry. They look like fake movies to me. I don't hear about them. I don't read about them. It's not working as a model for establishing legendary greatness. Now, I got to say the internet is undefeated in, uh, in just about anything. And I just saw this uh, post right here I want to share with you guys. Recently, um, this person right here, I thought it was hilarious. Um, they look like fake movies. And they have, uh, uh, <laughs> they put a picture of Gal Gadot running in her latest Wonder Woman 1984 movie. The running looks incredibly fake. And uh, this happens to be the scene where two kids end up randomly playing in the middle of the road in a desert where you could hear gunshots being fired. They just happen to be in the middle of the road playing with a ball and she has to rescue him so i thought the uh the irony is just hilarious to me but anyways uh i see what patty jenkins is saying and i see why people are roasting her because her movie uh wonder woman 1984 was one it was a direct -to streaming movie now i don't think anyone's gonna fault her for that because it was in the height of the pandemic and we are still very much in a pandemic right now so no one's gonna fault her for having a movie that went direct to streaming. But secondly, she did have a movie that just wasn't very good. And I, I think was probably, um, you know, I, I probably gave it, I gave it an okay review when it came out. But the more and more I watch Wonder Woman 90, 1984, the less I like it. And the more, I see what she was going for, but it just wasn't her best effort. And it was definitely not a great movie. So, at least in my opinion. But so a lot of people are roasting her for her comments that are kind of lacking a little self-awareness. That's what it seems like to a lot of people. But I do see what she's saying uh, because she's always been, been a champion of the movie theater experience, as are many directors. And uh, I'm not going to falter for that because there is nothing quite like a movie theater experience. It definitely transcends the experience you feel watching a movie at home where there's tons of distractions. Just something about sitting in um, a dark room um, with all of your attention focused on an experience, a story, uh, along with these strangers next to you. This, uh, that communal experience of watching a movie, there's nothing that's going to ever replace that. And uh, I got to agree in terms of establishing legendary greatness. I may be wrong. I, 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 I'm not always right. I'm probably wrong 90% of the time on the channel, in my opinions, but I can't remember a streaming movie that established great as someone as a, a uh, as, as, as has established someone as a legendary actor because it's so, it's so new. Um, their streaming services definitely paved the way for someone to become a great actor, someone who's making the jump from a streaming service to a big screen movie. It serves as a platform, but I don't know if it's ever established anyone as great. Now, we do have greats who, um, who are now 
open to working with streaming services. Martin Scorsese most recently made The Irishman on there, and you got Leo DiCaprio and um, Jennifer Lawrence making a new movie for uh, Netflix. You got The Rock, Gal Gadot, who just had the Red uh, Red Notice trailer, I think it was, that just dropped. So definitely a lot of greatness working with streaming services now. Um, but uh, I do see Patty Jenkins' point, and I, I think, uh, I don't without going on to ramble a little bit more, I do see what she was saying. I do think it was just really funny, the fact that um, the internet was just really, really roasting her for, for these comments, which, again, can they could have been said and stated a little bit better, but I'm sure it played to the crowd the way she, says, she stated it at CinemaCon. What do you guys think about Patty Jenkins' um, do you think she's coming back for Wonder Woman 1984, given how HBO is literally releasing um, all their movies on streaming and they're making a lot of direct-to-streaming movies uh, for the future? Curious to know what you guys think about these comments. Let me know in the comments down below. But speaking of Patty Jenkins and a character she's been working on, we have Wonder Woman. Um, now, if you guys can link me to this, this would be great because I saw a lot of rumors about Wonder Woman being on the set or at least in the same city where The Flash is filming. So there were a lot of speculation about Wonder Woman appearing in The Flash. Now, I think it would be great uh, if Wonder Woman was in The Flash. Uh, if anyone could link me to those uh, to the, the pictures or whatever post that was uh, being shared around, uh, that would be great because I'd love to share it because um, this movie, The Flash, it already seems like there's going to be a lot of people. And I'm going to talk about another character, and you can probably see him on the screen right now, that that we have a little bit more proof for. But uh, Wonder Woman may be appearing in The Flash, and uh, how great would it be to see uh, a reunion of some of these Justice League members? Now, a lot of rumors are also saying that this movie is paving the way for the future of DC, for the future of another Justice League movie. Now, is it going to feel right that we see possibly Wonder Woman uh, and The Flash and Ben Affleck's Batman in there without Henry Cavill's Superman? No, it's not going to feel right for sure. And it's also not going to feel right that Ray Fisher Cyborg's not in there. And um, I don't want to go into that whole subject right there. But anyways, do I think it's a possibility? Yes. It seems like, um, if you remember, I talked about John Campia's, one of John Campia's shows in the past. And um, I forget her name, Something Cummings, uh, the actress. She said from... Her sources, she has heard that there's going to be a lot more people in the movie than we have even heard. So Gal Gadot being in there makes makes sense, given how it's going to uh, be a movie that introduces the multiverse. Not surprised. Let me know what you guys think if Gal Gadot's going to be in the movie or not. But speaking of The Flash, there's another movie we may have a little bit more confirmation for, and that's uh, Martian Manhunter. Of course, we saw Martian Manhunter in Zack Snyder's Justice League, and there's a lot of rumors that Andy Muschietti has been a big fan of Zack Snyder's Justice League and wants to continue that universe in a way. So I think this is great. You know, I you know a lot of people chanting "Restore the Snyderverse." In fact, "Restore the Snyderverse" trended on uh, Twitter more so than uh, DC Fandom when DC Fandom was announced or the, the first trailer was dropped. So um, I'm on here. It says, <laughs> rumor, Ken I'm on Flash Film News. Kenny Knight stunt double of uh, Harry Lennox has been listed um, in hashtag Flash Movie on IMDb. It's only rumor since everyone can modify the IMDb pages. So yes, I went to IMDb and you can definitely click edit right there and just edit this. But uh, you can see him under the stunt performers. I'm um, just going to make sure that he's here. Yep, stunt says Kenny Knight, stunt double. Um, I'm wondering if Harry Lennox. Harry. Nope. Okay, Harry Lennox is not in there. But um, but yeah, if he is the stunt double for uh, Harry Lennox and he's in the movie, it's not like he can't be a stunt double for anyone else. But if he's specifically a stunt double for Harry Lennox, then that would be awesome to see Martian Manhunter because... It, I uh, definitely, it definitely wanted the move. Zack Snyder Justice League definitely left me wanting to see more of him. I didn't quite like the dialogue towards the end uh, with him, but I definitely want to see more of Martian Manhunter. Manhunter. Um, hopefully, Harry Lennox is in there as well, but definitely the stunt doubles can do and carry a lot of the load, especially if it's just for action. We just recently saw Ben Affleck's stunt double um, 
film a ton of scenes uh, for the Flash movie as well. And he's also Robert Pattinson's stunt double for the Flash, if I remember correctly. I think his name's Robert English. Uh, but yeah, this movie feels pretty stuffed so far. And um, it could be easy to get a little discouraged. I see some people, some people talking online and a little discouraged because they think that the movie feels overstuffed. I happen to disagree. Um, so does the cinematographer of the movie. Uh, so this, this article came out a while back. says the flash cinematographer says the complex DC comics adaptation is not really a comic book movie or a superhero movie. So what he had to say basically is, um, I'm just going to go directly to the quotes. It's going to be great. I mean, it's a complex movie and it's a fantastic concept of bringing the generations of these kind of comic books. Um, it's not based in reality. It's much more of a kind of technically complex. I think all the filmmakers are really keen that the technical complex complexity of the storytelling doesn't get in the way of just good quality filmmaking. Um, so the credits of the cinematographer include The Legend of Tarzan, which I quite enjoyed, and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, uh, which I did enjoy as well. But... Uh, yeah, one of the one of the things about one of the things about this movie is that um, in in listening to Michael Keaton say it, he had to read the script like three times and have it explained to him uh, for him to quite understand and grasp what's going on in this movie. And maybe that's just because he's not a huge comic book fan. That could be the case. But um, you know, we we have the we have the. Uh, visual effects artists from Zack Snyder's Just League who joined the team of The Flash because they read the script, because they saw the potential of it. So I have some high hopes for this Flash movie. I, I do think, you know, if, if there's going to be a lot of fan service, a lot of characters stuffed into the movie, um, I do think there's probably a way it could be done tastefully. Uh, of course, none of us have read the script, so we can't judge already whether or not it's overstuffed or not. Um, but to say that these movies are going to include these characters, I think it's awesome. Now, if you don't don't forget that Zack Snyder's Justice League had a ton of star power in that movie as well, and I don't think it felt overstuffed. Granted, it is four hours long, but even then, if Zack was able to release a theatrical cut himself, I don't think it would have felt overstuffed. I'm excited. I love when talent and some of our favorite characters are packed into this movie. It's a big movie. This Flash movie is going to be a Just League movie of sorts, and it's going to set up the foundation for future the future of the DCE. So I'm excited. Um, can a lot go wrong? Yes, I'm sure there's a lot at stake this for this movie, especially for someone like Walter Humata, who has an army of fans who really hate him right now and want to hate on everything that he has. So I'm excited um, about uh, director Andy Muschietti being able to execute his vision. And I hope it's a good one because there's a lot. There's a lot to look forward to. There's a lot to worry about for sure. But um, I choose to be excited for the future of the DCEU. We'll see what DC Fandom brings. There's a lot of things that uh, we want to see. So we'll definitely continue the coverage of this in a future video. If you did like this video, guys, please do give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.